Did you know that sunflowers are the international symbol for nuclear disarmament? In 1996, when Ukraine became a non-nuclear weapon state, sunflowers were planted at a missile base in the country to celebrate the monumental occasion. Since then, sunflowers have come to symbolize a world free of nuclear weapons, but that's not all there is to the story. Following the 1986 meltdown at the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine, which released over 100 radioactive elements into the environment, sunflowers were planted in droves to extract the radioactive isotopes from the fallout-impacted sites. This approach is based on the principle of phytoremediation, which employs the use of plants to cleanse the environment. Radioactive isotopes are also known as radioisotopes, atoms that have an unstable combination of protons and neutrons inside their nucleus. We have explained radioactivity in very simple terms in a separate video. You can find its link in the description. The Chernobyl Sunflower Project was born in 1994, when a New Jersey-based company planted sunflowers on a floating raft with the intention to absorb radioactive isotopes from the water. The test was carried out on a 75-meter square pond located at a distance of one kilometer from the Chernobyl reactor. It was observed that the plants selectively absorbed radiocesium and radiostrontium from the water, and results indicated that about 95% of the radionuclides had been cleared out in a span of only 10 days. While the majority of radiocesium stayed in the roots, most of the radiostrontium had moved to the shoots. The sunflowers didn't metabolize the radionuclides, the flowers were incinerated, and the radioactive waste was disposed of safely. The question is, how can a sunflower plant do any of that? Life arose on Earth when levels of radiation were much higher than they are today. Plants, in response, evolved ways to survive in adverse conditions, so it's not surprising that some plants have developed complex systems for the uptake and removal of toxic and even radioactive materials. Sunflowers have the ability to soak up exceedingly large amounts of toxic elements in their tissues, like radiocesium and radiostrontium, which were found in the radioactively contaminated soils and water bodies around the power plant. Owing to this enhanced capacity for metal uptake, sunflowers are called hyperaccumulators. Not all plants can survive after absorbing toxins. Many can't stave off the poisoning and will perish. However, a sunflower's large biomass and its ability to grow rapidly allow it to isolate the contaminants and continue growing. Certain nuclear isotopes mimic the nutrients that sunflowers would normally absorb from the soil. Cesium, for example, mimics potassium, which is essential for photosynthesis, while strontium parallels calcium's chemistry, which is needed for the growth and structural development of the plant. While searching for these nutrients, the plant readily uptakes the cesium and strontium that mimic these essential elements. Sunflowers are proficient in the root-to-shoot translocation of contaminants, i.e. the absorbed radioactive contaminants are concentrated in the plant's biomass and converted into carbon-based forms. The harvestable biomass of the grown-up sunflowers can be disposed of via pyrolysis, a process in which the organic carbon in the plant is burnt, leaving behind radioactive waste. The radioactive waste can then be converted into glass by vitrification and stored safely underground. There is always a chance of hyperaccumulator plants being ingested by animals or birds, thus causing contamination to spread through the food chain. This is why sunflowers would typically be harvested before they start bearing seeds, as the aim is to harvest the biomass that contains the contaminants. Once flowering and seed production are initiated, the plants don't have much vegetative growth, meaning that the production of harvestable tissue to store the contaminants is much lower. For Chernobyl, while the decontamination of water using sunflowers showed favorable results, cleaning up the soil was not as effective. Since remediation methods were implemented a few years after the fallout, the radiocesium had already been bound to the soil particles, which hindered its extraction. Sunflowers were also planted in Fukushima, Japan, after a powerful earthquake triggered a tsunami, which led to a nuclear disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in 2013. Efforts to implement phytoremediation using sunflowers in Japan, however, were not deemed successful and had a markedly different outcome than they did at Chernobyl. This could be attributed to Fukushima having used a sunflower variety with no phytoextraction capabilities and cesium fixation in the soil. This failure had significant implications in terms of the importance of screening plant types for phytoremediation. The selected plant species must be tolerant to high concentrations of the contaminant, 
while accumulating a substantial amount of the target contaminant in its tissues. It should grow rapidly and have a high biomass production capacity. Field mustard, amaranthus, and coxcomb are some other plants that have been utilized for phytoremediation. From lifting people's spirits to lifting toxicity from soil and water, sunflowers dazzle us with a brilliance that demands to be admired. With its potential to cleanse the environment of the unwanted and the dangerous, the sunflower is no mere flower. The myriad possibilities linked to the plant's biology have just begun to blossom.